Welcome to the course Applied Statistics for the Environmental and Life Sciences. This is taught at the University of Alberta as a slash course, so it's fourth year senior undergraduate level, but also meant for incoming graduate students who do their research project in this uh, general field. So we have lots of students from forestry and agriculture, but also from bioscience, earth and atmospheric sciences, and occasionally we also have students from medicine and engineering. The focus of this course is quite applied and we have a broad range of different uh, backgrounds. But the example data sets I picked, they should work for everybody. So what we do in 10 units is develop the conceptual foundations of statistics. We cover pretty much all the classical uh, statistical techniques. I also added some modern simulation-based techniques or Bayesian approaches for non-parametric statistics. So we cover all important univariate techniques for three data types, normally distributed, non-normally distributed, uh, binomial, um, and we also cover linear and non-linear regression. So this course covers a fair bit of ground. Uh, you get a pretty much complete univariate tool set, and you also learn how to implement all of this in the R programming environment. Um, so the course is specifically meant for people who need to use statistics. So if you are as an undergraduate student, if you are involved in research projects, or if you do an honor thesis, or if you are a graduate student who will do their thesis research, uh, this is the course for you. Um, so since we get a little bit into the weeds in terms of our programming and implementing all of this, I don't recommend this course for people who don't actually need to use statistics in the foreseeable future. So this course is a little bit too much um, and I believe it is an elective for everybody. Uh, so don't necessarily take it if you don't need it. This course has a public website and uh, you can get there with this uh, URL shortcut tinyurl.com rr480. And what's posted there are all the lecture videos, um, all the lecture notes down here, um, data sets and labs uh, that you can do, and uh, a bunch of other tutorials. So this is primarily for self-study if you did not get into the course. And it's also uh, meant as a permanent archive for people who have taken this class to look things up uh, if they forgot something or uh, lost some notes. So, so I, I leave it all on this public website. Now, if you take this class for credit, um, go to the eClass website. So it's the same URL, except you add a slash and eClass. So there you find your official syllabus and schedule. So there's information about in-person labs. If you take this class online, and there will also be online lab support and synchronous Zoom sessions. There's also a quiz for each of the 10 units. Uh, there'll be a number of group activities, and you also do a, a project or a group project and you'll find instructions here, uh, right there. And the TA and I provide project support, again, either in person or on online in uh, group sessions. And in the end, we have a symposium uh, for all the projects. So if you are doing this in person, these will be live presentations. Or if you take the class online, we also have an online symposium. And if you want to know what people have done in the past uh, in this class, so again, try this shortcut slash projects. Um, there'll be all the previous presentations of the past more than 10 years now. So there's presentation recordings and you submit your project as a website, which is uh, another skill that you will learn as part of this class if you don't already know how to do it. So it's a good skill to have and it's much nicer than uh, a term paper that goes into the dustbin. So you can take inspiration from this very large archive now for your own project designs. So let's take a look at the overall course objectives. So we start with understanding the foundations of statistics, how it all works. And I explain this without any math. There's really no prerequisites. If, if this is your first statistics class, you should be fine. I also want you to get good at identifying bullshit. You're probably aware there's been books that have been written about how to lie with statistics. So by really understanding how this works, I think it'll be much harder for somebody to pull the wool over your eyes or sweep something under the rug. 
There's also an enormous amount of misuse and misinterpretation of statistics in the scientific literature. And um, there's dozens of paper that make fun of this. This is one with a particularly nice and sarcastic title, uh, The Earth is Round, P Smaller Than 0 0.05. And these kind of papers came out from almost the day that statistics was invented to the present day. So this is just a random article from 2019. Scientists rise up against statistical significance. Uh, more than 800 signatories call for an end to hype claims and dismissal of possible crucial effects. Um, so it's important to get that right and uh, that what this course focuses on. So I want you to correctly design research studies and correctly interpret the results. So if that's done right, then statistics really have something to contribute. But there really is a large portion of nonsense out there in the literature. So uh, that is something to be aware of. Now I mentioned earlier the course is hands-on. So we'll spend quite a bit of time on uh, data management competency in R. So if your data is not properly organized and, and if there's errors in it, that garbage in, garbage out issue that's also very prevalent. So you learn how to organize your data, do visual data exploration, error detection before you make any moves in terms of statistical analysis. Then you learn how to select and execute appropriate statistical methods in R. We'll talk about relevant assumptions not all of them are relevant, and how to correctly interpret the output of those tests. And then last but not least, we'll cover how to create publication or thesis quality graphs and tables, and to report your results as part of the project report, so uh, as a website in this case, or if you're a graduate student, you will use those skills to uh, complete a thesis chapter. So next, let's take a look at our statistical toolbox that we cover in this class. It's a fairly complete set of univariate statistical methods that we cover in this course. So everything that is part of the core curriculum that is in black here. And the way I like to organize this is uh, by data type. So if you have normally distributed data, we have one set of methods that are called parametric statistics. Non-parametric statistics refers to continuous data that is not normally distributed. And then another type that's fairly common is binomial data, so binary data, where you have a response variable that you measure that only has two values. So dead or alive, present or absent, uh, infected or healthy. So that's also a very common data type that you may encounter. So in all of those have different uh, statistical tests to accomplish particular objectives. Um, so I think I'll actually do a separate video to go through them in a bit more detail. But what we cover here are most of the things that you can do in univariate statistics with any kind of data type that you might encounter. So also I want to point out that we do a few things slightly differently than what you might expect from a typical statistics class. We do have an emphasis on doing science with those methods hands-on. And um, as such, uh, we, we really start with data visualization, understanding your data, uh, on quality control, fixing all the errors that are in your data set. And stats are almost an afterthought in the way I teach this class. Um, so if I look at the labs, I actually counted the lines of code that you have to work your way through. So data visualization, 150 lines, quality control, and uh, getting everything organized, another 150 lines. And then all that toolbox that I showed you prior, that's only 50 lines of R code. So all those tests are actually easy to implement and uh, run in the end. And the reason why we spend so much time on data organization, visualization, quality control, uh, management, is that the data sets that you encounter in the wild, they are nothing like the data sets that you uh, get in the labs. So these are all nicely simplified. Everything is perfectly organized. That's not how your real data looks like. So when you get to work with real data sets, uh, either from your supervisor, from your own research, or from collaborators, they'll be wildly disorganized. They tend to be full of errors. Uh, formatting is not right. They may have to be subsetted or merged in particular ways in order for your analysis to work. So if you feed these raw data sets into your analysis, you may get an answer, but it's most certainly not correct. And doing the reorganization and exploration of your data in code is actually much preferable to doing copy and paste jobs in Excel. So you, if you do everything in code, you have a record of what was actually done. 
So you ideally want to keep your initial data entry sheets completely untouched. They should not be manipulated. Just for transparency, all the data preparation in order to get a valid analysis in the end, that should be done in code, and that is what you learn in this class. Another way in which this class is a little bit different is that we are we take some inspiration from uh, Bayesian statistics. Bayesian statistics, that's a field that's been around for a long time, but in the last decade, it's become very popular for applied statistics. So many people who take a Bayesian statistics course, their first reaction is, oh, this is so much more useful than uh, you know your classical statistic methods. But a lot of the things that you can do in Bayesian statistics, you can also do with frequentist methods. So credible intervals of Bayesian statistics are a direct equivalent to confidence intervals. Uh, we'll cover maximum likelihood uh, estimates. We'll focus on effect size statistics. And uh, we can't do decision analysis as elegantly as in Bayesian statistics, but we'll have very close equivalents. Um, so the reason why I don't include Bayesian methods is they are actually a little bit uh, more difficult to set up and uh, complex models also require a lot of computing power. So we don't have these problems with classical statistics. Even quite complicated models you can run on any 10-year-old computer. Also, one of the key advantages of Bayesian statistics is that you can specify prior probabilities or prior expectations, uh, and that will improve your statistical estimates and your statistical power. But this class is still for beginners, so you're all still quite junior scientists who are probably going to do their first own research. And um, without years of experience or history of related data analysis, there will really be no advantage uh, to you to know these methods at this stage. But you can keep it in mind for the future as something interesting you might want to explore once you have uh, some research experience and some experience with statistical analysis. So another big departure we will take is on classical null hypothesis testing. Um, so we rarely will be satisfied with the, with the classical H0 expectation that there is no difference uh, because nobody cares. So we'll pick a meaningful null hypothesis, then we'll make a statement about something in the world, and then we calculate probabilities that you're right about that. So that would be 1 minus the p-value versus wrong about it, which is the p-value. So that's that's a different take on the p-value than uh, you usually get, but it is actually the right way to think about it. And then the last thing that we want to practice is through your projects is linking real scientific hypotheses to statistical hypotheses. And what I mean by that exactly, I'll explain in the next video.